Shalom, shalom. I need Yehuda Yorwa. Um, this is going to be uh, kind of interesting. Um, I first want to give a shout out to a uh, brother who I know, um, uh, Yehakanan. Um, he's in down in Atlanta. Good brother, I've been knowing for years. Um, me and him had a nice conversation last night, and he was just telling me that he had been talking and uh, having discussions with uh, the community of people who we know as now Messianics. Now, I do have a um, People who I do know in, um, in that community, um, you know, we're actually cool. You know, we're very cordial, but, you know, we have differences differences in understandings, of course. Um, so, that being said, he was asking me questions, etc. cetera. Um, there are lots of scriptures that they use uh, in what we call the Tanakh, which is an acronym for Torah, Naveen, Kituvin, which is the law of the prophet and the writings, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and as you know, we have a differences in understanding. So um, I guess today I'll talk about why people like us, why we are Mishikhiim, uh, which I'll, matter of fact, let me share my screen real quick. All right, let me share my screen, put up the notepad. I also have a Hebrew keyboard here. All right, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and put that on up. All right. So, I have a little Hebrew keyboard. Uh, all right. Meshichiyim. All right. I'll just type that out for you. Let me show you what we have here. Boom. All right. So, when you hear people like us say that we are Meshichiyim, all right, this is what you know as Messianics or Christians, all right? Not to be confused with the Christian religion, all right? Um, which I'll, matter of fact, I'll make that the first thing that I'll pull up today. Um, but before we do, you see the word Christians. Now check this out. We're gonna take this out here. Then we're gonna make Messiah. That's uh, the main word there. And we have the root word in Messiah. Because, you know, we we confess that who you know is Yeshua uh, as the Mashiach, the Messiah. The root word there is anointing or to anoint, which is the dumping and the smearing of oil. All right. So um, in our culture, a king and a priest was given this title here. So uh, that being said, we believe that who you know is Yeshua or Yehoshua. Uh, someone will call Yahawashai. In some communities, they will say uh, Yeshaya, um, Yahusha. Um, in Islam, they'll say Isa, but I'm not here to play the name game. Um, we'll just keep it at Messiah, all right, Mashiach. Now, that being said, there is a passage uh, in the Hebrew New Testament, which you actually can get the hard copy if anybody is interested in that. Just reach out to me and I'll show you how you can actually uh, obtain um the hard copy of it and of course if you've been around me long enough then you already know that i've been having it let me show you real quick all right so yeah and as you see there have you saw how al p matai all right line one you see uh sefer to the yeshua hamashiach bin david bin abraham all right so the book of the lineage of jesus the messiah the son of david son of abraham etc etc so that being said, you can actually obtain the hard copy of just the Hebrew New Testament. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll go to um, uh, and what was I going on? here? Yeah, I forgot. All right. So as you saw, I put here in the notepad, um, Meshachim. All right, and uh, we broke it all the way down to the word anoint, uh, uh, anointing to have here. What I told you, the dumping, the smearing of oil. All right, so essentially this is where you get the name Christians, all right, or uh, Messianics. So you hear people say these things. That being said, um, let's go here. I just want to get to the point. All right, so this is what you know as the uh, Acts of the Apostles. Um, Masse, Ha, Shelechim. So this is what you know as the acts or the doings of the, you have the root word, shelach, which means the sin. So the apostles. Perek, which is a chapter. Yo, which is numerical value of 10. Aleph, numerical value of one. So thus you have 
uh, the Acts of the Ones Who Are Sent, or the Apostles, chapter 11. All right, so in verse 26, the part that I want to deal with, um, we have Vayihu, Yishvin, Yechad. All right, so just some of them says together. Um, Bach Hila Shana Timima Um Lam Dim Am Ra. That's what you know as Rabbi. Now, this is the part I want here. As who, um, as who All right, Be An Yeah, then we have here. Matter of fact, let me show you what I'm focused on first because this is going to be very important here. Okay, here. Then this word here, uh, Likro et ha tal medim. The shame me she as we were talking about earlier. So here we go. Um, it lets us know, and they begin, uh, in Antioch to call the students, the learners, the followers of the disciples uh, by the name of Messianics, the Christians. So this first happened, or it began in Antioch. All right, that's where it began. All right, and and the disciples, of course, in Antioch were first called Christians, etc. So in a nutshell, that's basically what we have there. All right, so this is where it first happened. Um, or where it first began, and that happened in in Antioch. All right, that's what happened there. Now, that being said, when we as Meshachim or Messianics or Christians, not to be confused with the religion, when we say that we are Meshachim, Messianics. Um, for those who don't know, we're essentially saying that we believe that Yeshua or Yehoshua is Mashiach uh, or is HaMashiach. He's the anointed. He's the um, he's the Messiah. All right. So you do have people in our community that know that there's Israelites that don't believe that. All right. But we actually do. Now, that being said, um, I may do a series. I don't want to do too much. Um, uh, Yechanan, you already know this is mainly for you, brother, because uh, you know, we had the long discussion, so um, I'll make this um, this is personally for you, brother. I'll make this um, kind of to the point, quick and easy, uh, to grasp, easy to understand. Um, so yeah, definitely just follow along because I know you said you have people that's in uh, your circle who you actually converse with and things like that. You can share this with them, and they'll see why we are Meshachim, all right, Messianics, or Christians. Again, not to be confused with the religion of Christianity. That's not the same, and that's another topic. That being said, I guess I will start. Hmm, where do I want to start? All right, um, let's pull it on up. I guess I'll start here. All right, so that being said, this is um, safaria.com, as you see up top. Safari is the Hebrew word for library, library. So those who have access to the site, you can definitely access what we call today uh, Torah, which is the law, Navim, which is short for Navi, uh, prophet or prophets, and the Chav Sofi, the final Chav, is the word for uh, that they have in Kituvim, which is the writings like Proverbs, uh, which is Mishli or Psalms, Tehalim, etc., etc. That being said, we're going to go to the Tanakh uh, by Midbar in the desert. All right, that's what Numbers is. And we're going to go to chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. And I want to head toward verses that. Let's all start with eight here. Okay. Let's all start with eight. So we have a Vaidabir Yehovah. So and the Lord said L2 Moshe Moses uh Lemor saying or to say. Then Ka, which is 
take. That's the first word there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, ha, take. Et is the direct object. It's pointing to who? Uh, ha, which is the. Mete. Mete, which is the rod. All right? So take the rod is what um, the Lord is saying to Moshe. All right? Then we have the next word, the, which is and. Ha, hell. And gather together. Et, Ha which is who? The congregation. Then he says, Ata, you, the Aharon, Aaron, Achicha, your brother. So he's telling him, look, gather, uh, take the rod and gather together. Uh, yeah, gather together, you, um, yeah, yeah, you and Aaron, your brother. All right, that's what he's telling them. Then we have another there. And some will pronounce this as the actual letter Y. All right, as well. So uh, that's another topic there. So he's letting them know once again um, to gather them together. And then we have the word ve de baratim and speak ye unto them. Um, then we have, now I'm saying speak you l to ha sela. Look at that. That's the word for the rock. The rock. All right. So he's saying, speak you to the rock. All right. Speaking to the rock. Let a nahum before the eyes. Um, then a time, and it shall give me my, and it shall give forth his water. Now, wait a minute. So this rock was referred to as a he. The question is, who is this rock? Because it ain't the most high, because the most high told them to gather the assembly together, you and your brother, and speak to the rock, and it shall give forth his water. The rock was referred to as a he, the male. And I went the most high. So the most high told Moses to tell him that it shall bring forth his water. Look at this. Let's go back. Pull this up. Right here. Right here. Me my. Right there. His his water. His water. So the rock that he was told to speak to, as we see here, the rock, remember he said before thy eyes, and it shall give what? His water. His water. Right there. Should give for his water. That rock was called a he. So who's the rock? Make that make sense. Who is the rock? Because that rock right there ain't talking about the most high at all. So then we have the Hosita. Uh, and you shall bring the him to them my water men which is from or out of then we have ha selah out of the rock so here it is said you should bring forth water out of this rock out of this rock is what he told them the hish kita so shall you give drink at direct object ha the congregation. So let them know the congregation. Then it says, by et be e ram, and the beast. All right, the beast or cattle, etc. So the question is, who is this rock that he said was a he? Us as messianics know the answer to that. We know the answer is in what we call the New Testament. All right, we know that. Let's go to another one really quick. Let me share my screen. So we come out of here, going back to the Tanakh, and we're going to go to uh, Joshua. Show you who I'll get. There's so many. We'll go to chapter 45. All righty. 
We're gonna go to hmm here. That's where I want. So this is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 11. It says, Ko Amar Yehovah. So thus saith the Lord, uh, Kedosh, the Holy One, Yisrael, the Holy One of Israel. So the question is, when you ask what we call non-messianics. Now, when I say non-messianics, I'm referring to those who do not believe as we do. They don't believe that who we call Yeshua, Yehoshua, or Yehovah Shai is Mashiach, the Messiah. Okay, so when I'm saying them, that's what I'm talking about. So it says, Ko Amar Yehovah Kodesh Yisrael. So thus saith the Lord, then he is called the Holy One of Israel. You ask them, well, who's that? They'll say, that's the Most High. But it says, that meaning and. And who? So it says, the Yosro. That's the word for his. But look at this. That's the, That word right there is the word for maker, one to fashion, to compose, to form. So right there, that's the one who framed or molded something. Matter of fact, let's show that really quick. Isaiah. Oh, wait, let me put it back on English. Sorry about that. Isaiah 45, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and there's somebody else. If y'all saying it's the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, if y'all saying that that's Yah, but then there's an and, and his maker, and his creator, which is what? Right here. And his maker. That means to form, to fashion, to mold. That's what that means right there. So right here, here it is right here. And his maker. Look at this. And his maker, his creator. Let's click on it and see what this word is real quick. To form, to fashion, to frame right there. See what the strong say. Look at this. To mold into a form, especially as a potter. When you're dealing with what? The clay. So to frame or put together, etc. Potter, creator, creator. So, ladies and gents, the non messianics in your English Bible, it says, Thus said the Lord, this is who you call the Most High, the Holy One of Israel. Right? Who's that? You said that's the most high. Okay, well then, if that's the most high, then what you're saying is that the most high has a creator. And I know you ain't finna say that. So who's that? Who's this? This holy one of Israel. If you said that's the most high, it says, and his creator right there. That's somebody else. So if you non-Messianics don't believe in Christ, and you say that Isaiah 45 and 11, when it says, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, if you're saying that's the most high, then essentially you're saying that the most high has a creator. He has one who formed the fashion or made him. And I know you ain't saying that. So who's his maker? Who's his creator? Who's that? That has to be answered. Who is his maker? Who is his creator? Hmm? Let's go to another one really quick. Let me pull it back up. And I hope I'm not going too fast because I do know there are people on here who is new to the Hebrew language and that's okay. And uh, let's see, let's go. Matter of fact, um, um, I'm gonna go back there. Let's go to Isaiah 44. Cause in the future, I'm gonna definitely break down at Isaiah 43 and 11. I think I'm gonna do it on the next one. Or whatnot, because they never bag it up to chapter 42. You know what I'm saying? To get the understanding of that one through five and then linking up with Matthew, you know what I'm saying? Uh, which I do in the future, whatnot. But anyway, so Isaiah 44 and 6. So we have this verse here. That's what I'm gonna read. So it says, Ko Amar Yehovah Melech Yisrael, Vagalo, Yehovah Zavaot, Ani Roshon, Vaani, Acharon, Umevaladai in Elohim. Wait, all right, I went too fast. I said I wasn't going to do that. So, sorry. We have Cho Amar 
So thus saith Jehovah, which is the Lord. So this is what the Lord said. Now notice, so this is the name of God, all right? The most high, as you know. All right, it's the tetragrammaton, which is the four letters, all right? Jehovah. But notice we see his name again right here. So his name is there twice. So it says, thus saith the Lord, this Lord is known as Melech, which is king, Melech, but there's a dash, Melechu, Yisrael. So he's known as the king of Israel. Who? This Lord right here. Then it says, the, meaning and, below, and his redeemer. So this is one who's coming to redeem. Look at that. To redeem. Oh, yeah. So, here it is. This Lord is known as the King of Israel, but that's not it, though. If you say that's the most high right here, then right here it says, and. And his Redeemer. Look at that. Ga'al, which is the root word, might I add. That's a Redeemer. So who's that? Because he's identified as Jehovah, not this one, but this one, Jehovah Zavaot, the Lord of armies, the Lord of war, all right? The Lord of armies or the Lord of hosts. And this Redeemer, this Gaal, who is the Lord of armies, he says, Ani, I am Roshon the first, all right, which has the root word Rosh, which is the head, the chief, the top. So he's the first, the, the, meaning and, Ani, I am, or I, Ahron, the last, the latter, if you will. Umibala die, and without me, or apart from me, or except me, it says in, there is no, Elohim, God. So, that being said, ladies and gents, in Isaiah 44 and 6, there's two different lords, one known as the Melech Yisrael, and the other one known as Zavaot, um, Yehovah or Yahweh Zavaot, the Lord of armies. So you got the, the Lord, which is the King of Israel, but then you have another Lord, which is the the redeemer he's the one that's coming to redeem and he's known as the first and the last where you know it's the aleph and the top of the alpha and the omega so that lord is known as the redeemer and that's saying without me there is no god and we'll go into that later um but i want to make this like a small little series or whatnot and i want to kind of chip at it like one piece at a time so that's two different lords there. That being said, let's go ahead and pull it up in English real quick. All right, English, boom. All right, Isaiah 45. Um, Isaiah 44, I mean, that was Isaiah 44 and verse six. It says, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of, I mean, I'm sorry. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I'm the first, I'm the last, and besides me, there is no God. So there is one Lord right here, and then there's another Lord right here. So you got the Lord, and then you have another one, the Lord. So as I told you earlier, this Lord is known as who? The King of Israel. Who? This Lord. But then there's an and. His. Who's the he? This Lord right here. His Redeemer. And this Redeemer is called the Lord. But he's known as a different Lord, the Lord of armies, the Lord of hosts, who says, I am the first, I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. Oh, we're going to deal with that too, dealing with that no God, but I think I might do that one in part two. So that being said, there's two different Lords there, and one thing we'll learn later, dealing with this tetragrammaton, this letter Yod, matter of fact, let me show you real quick let me put it right here in this notepad okay so this letter the small letter let me make it bigger for y'all this small letter is the 10th letter in the hebrew olive bay and it's called yod 
all right um it's uh in the pictographs uh in the more older style of hebrew it looks like a hand and um so that yod there is a hand the next letter let's put here first yod equals a hand this hay what many don't know let me hold for the hay this it equal it said it means be, it's a window and it means behold and it also means the then we have the vav which is the or some will call the wa vav wa this here is the sixth letter all right and um this sixth letter it means a pig or a nail all right then you have the hay once again on the end all right so you have the yod here hay here vav here hay again which is there so you have behold the hand then you have behold the peg or nail so the crucifixion of who we know as christ is in the name of god a lot of people don't know this that being said let's go to genesis real quick so in the tanakh you have here you have Bereshit Barai Elohim et Hashemaim ve'et Ha'aretz. So in the beginning, God created et, the direct object, uh, which could be the, this is the first letter in Hebrew and the last letter. This is the first letter in Hebrew and it's the last letter. So in the beginning, he created the beginning and the end. That's a whole nother topic though. Right there. Then we have Ha, the Shemaim, the heavens, the Ed and Ha'aretz, the earth. But this word is the word I want to focus on here. All right. So, what well, most people don't know, in Hebrew, everything is equal to a numerical value in the picture. This is the letter Beit. Oh, wait. This tell you right here. Uh, Bereshit. Bereshit. And it means in the beginning in the beginning all right in the beginning now i don't want to move fast hold on one second I had a little text message i man calling me but they might call him back one second guys okay Yeah, shalom, bro. Hey, I'm going to call you right back. Shalom. Okay, sorry about that. So you have better sheet, which is in the beginning. Now, that being said, um, these two words right here form the word bar. Bar. And bar is another word to say son. Okay? Now, let me show you something really quick. Um, I'll give an example. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17 real quick uh when the question was asked um i'm starting 15 he said unto them but no no let me go ahead uh 13 it says when yeshua jesus came to the coast of caesarea philippi he asked his disciples saying who men say that i that i the son of man am who do they say that i am and they said some said you are john the baptist some elijah and others jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said unto them, but whom you say, like, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, meaning you the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, blessed are you who? Bar Jonah, meaning son of Jonah. Let's check that out real quick. Real quick. Bar Jonah. Now, Bar Jonah, look at this, son of Jonah. See that? Bar Jonah. All right. So, that being said, let's go here. 
Matthew. All righty. Um, chapter 16 and uh, verse 17. Okay, here we go. All right, here. Bar Jonah. Right there. Let's see if they put that there. Bar Jonah. And this is the word for bar. All right. And that word bar is another word which means son. Okay. That being said, this is the same letters. Beit Resh. Bar, which means son. All right. So you could say son for bar, or you could say bane. Or some would say Ben, and some would say Bond, which you know is son. But this here is Baros, means son. So, in the beginning, you have the Beit Resh. The next letter is the letter Aleph. Aleph. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Let me go back. I'm tripping. Where we at? Let me put that back in there. Boom. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. That being said, we have the letter Aleph, 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 um, equals that letter, that letter, and Aleph is the first, it's numerical value of one, but it's the first letter in the Hebrew Aleph bait. And this is, it is the symbol of an ox. And it means first strength leader power. Thus is the symbol for God. The first, the supreme. So in the beginning, we have the son of God. Now we have the next letter, Shin. Shin. All right. That's the Hebrew. Hold away. The Hebrew letter Shin. That letter there. And this letter Shin. It's a symbol of T. And that means consume, devour, or destroy. All right, so then we have the last uh, letter in Bittle Sheet, which is Tav. Now you may see some people say this, Tav. And this word here is um, seal, sign, covenant, or cross. cross. So, when you put Bereshit together, it says the son of God is destroyed by his own hand willingly on the cross. The crucifixion of Christ is in the first verse. The first word. Now, check this out. Isaiah 46 right here it says remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning I told you what it was from the beginning from Genesis and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel my thoughts shall stand and I would do all my pleasure, everything that I want to do. So here it is. He told us the end from the beginning, from the better sheet. He told us that the son, which is bar of God, Aleph, was going to be destroyed. And then, uh, oh, I forgot the yod. Sorry about that. Yod. Hand. Here. Sorry about that, guys. Hand. 
Um, yeah. So he told us that the son of God is going to have his hand crucified or destroyed. His hand crucified or destroyed on the top. Literally. And of course, he brought in the new covenant, introduced the new covenant. That's one of the mysteries that's right in Genesis. Literally. Numerical value of 913. That's a whole another topic, though, too. So, here it is. He told us this. From the beginning. From the beginning. That he, of course, were to be crucified. That's in the name, the Tetragrammaton, the Yod, the Hey, the Vav, and the Hey. That's in the Most High's name. It's also in the beginning. And we were told that from the beginning. From the beginning. So going back, dealing with the Tanakh. Oh, you show your who. Mm -hmm. 44. And uh, verse 6 again. Thus said the Lord right there. Behold the hand behold the nail so the crucifixion of the Messiah is in his name you know, every time you see it you see the crucifixion of Christ numerical value of 26 numerical value of 26 in English you know this as Psalms 22 16 Sweating David it says, for dogs have compassed me. And this is actually historical. Um, and I may bring this out in the next series. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. That didn't happen to David. I tell my bones. I tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They've parted garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Now, in the next series, I may go over this. All right? And showing the prophecies in uh, John 19, in Matthew 27, etc. So, um, but I want to go ahead and move on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, understand that what I'm showing you, this is something that for the most part is not really being taught because a lot of people can't see what we see regarding who Hamashiach is, who the Messiah is. It's not being shown. It's not being taught. And if it is, people ignore it. They will ignore you when you bring these things out. So understand what special time that we are in that we are able to see these things. Okay? That we're still able to see these things. Now, I want to go to uh, another one in Tanakh. Um, Shemot of the book of Exodus, chapter 4. All right, Exodus chapter 4. Something I want to deal with. All right. So, Exodus chapter 4, and um, here we go. It says, Ba'amar to el paro ko amar yehua b'nei Bechori Yisrael. So, um, and say to Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord. Now, remember, anytime we see that, behold the hand, behold the nail. It says, B'nai, which is my son, uh, Bechori, which is the word for eldest or firstborn, Yisrael. So here it is. We have the word Bain, which is son there. All right. Now, however, this word here is the word for firstborn, eldest. So if, because I'm going to go somewhere with this, because when you bring up the word son, this is one of the verses they'll bring up. Now, it's like, since you want to play um, semantics and you want to be sarcastic with this, well, okay, well, let's be sarcastic back. If this word here is the word for eldest or firstborn, first is the key word. What about second then? So if this is the firstborn son, then there obviously has to be another one then. Since he's the firstborn, since he's the eldest, he's the oldest, obviously he has another son. You ain't gonna say he got a daughter. So 
if he's the firstborn son, then who's the other son then? Who's the second son? If you want to play this game. If I said that's my first jacket, that obviously mean I have more than one. That's my first pair of shoes. That obviously mean I have a second pair of shoes. Johnny went to the bar, he took his first drink, his first shot. Obviously he had more shots. Johnny also went home and he gave his firstborn son a hug. Obviously he has more than one son then, if you wanna play this game. So this is Exodus 4 and 22. Exodus 4 and 22. He obviously has another one then, if we're going that route. Think about that. Something to think about. Now, that being said, the next one I want to go to is, hmm, I guess we'll, it's, something, it's, it's another thing I want to point out in uh, Ezra real quick. All right, Ezra, book of Ezra, chapter four, all right? So Ezra chapter four, and it is, all right, here, 24. So, um, Ezra 4, 24, it says, Be Dayin, then Betilat. So then uh, Betilat, which is then they cease, um, which is the next word here. Ah, uh, Avidat, uh, the work. All right. Bait, which is the other house. Look at this. Elaha. Now, this is the Aramaic word of saying God. We know one as Elohim, which is, of course, from the Hebrew, but that says Elaha. Now, get this, guys. Now, look. Now, a lot of people don't know that it was written in Hebrew Aramaic. So, check this out. This is the word. Look at it. Strong's H426. Elah. Elah. So look at this. It tell you. Elah. It's what? Not Hebrew, but Aramaic. And it means God. Okay? God. All right? That being said, Let's go here. All righty, in the Tanakh. And I want to go to, what do I want to do? In the Tanakh, okay, Malachi. Um, what do I want to grab? Um, that's your will. Hosea, your Mayhu. Um, do I want to go there now? Um, hmm, I think I, I think I want to wait. Yeah, I think I want to wait. Do I? Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna wait. Now, nah, you know what? Why not? Daniel 3. This is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just deal with it now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this is when they refused to bow to this image. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got thrown into the midst of the fiery furnace. So check this out. Verse 25 is something I want to read really quick. Okay. So here we have Ena, um, the Amar. So, and he answered and said, Ha, lo, or behold, Ana, which is I, Chaze, which is like a vision, something that you see, all right? Guvrin. So he see men, but how many men? Arba, ah, all right? I'm sorry, Arba, I'm Arbia. I see four, uh, four men, the uh, loose, which is the word Serain. Then we have the word Mehalchin, walking. All right, so you see four men lose walking. Um, Bego Nura in the middle of what? Of the fire. The Chaval, um, Lo, 
E tie. So, and they have no hurt right here. They not hurting. All right. Sorry about that. Then we have the word behon, which is day. Ve, rev, uh, ve, reve. And the form D of, then the word ravi of the fourth, dema is like or in comparison, levar. They go to the word bar right there, which means son, as I told you about earlier. Son, son of who? Look at this. Elohim of God. But look at the root word there. What word is that, y'all? Strong's H426. Elah. Elah. This is the word for God. So right there, they said right here. Look at this. Right here. The form of the fourth is like who? Son of God. Right there. That go to the word bar. Bait. Resh. In Hebrew. Remember we saw this earlier? In the beginning in Genesis. I was showing y'all earlier about that word son. Bar. Remember that right here? That's the same two letters you see right there for son. Look at that. Same two letters right there. Same two letters. Of who? God. Strong's H426. Elah. There's the word. Elah. Elahin has the root word Allah. God. Right there. Who's that? Who who is the son of God right here? I know you ain't finna say Exodus 4 and 22 at all. You can't use that. You can't use that. It said the form of the fourth was compared to who? The son of God. The son of God. The son of God. That has nothing to do with Exodus 4 and 22 now. Now come on, my brothers. So that being said, who's the son of God there? Here's another question. Uh, we'll go to, uh, let's see, to Helene Michele. Um, So we're gonna go to, uh, this is Sefer Michele, Lamed. This is what you know as Proverbs chapter 30. All right, and we're gonna go to verse four. All right, so Proverbs 30, verse four, guys. The first um, thing here says, me, Allah, so who have risen up or went up or um, ascended up Shemayim into the heaven? All right. The Yardan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the Yar. I'm sorry. The Yirad. <laughs> sorry about that. Tongue twister. So, or descended. All right. So who is this? You know, like the word Jordan, it's the same root word. It means to descend, to bring down, to come down. All right. So who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who, which is the word me, asaf, asaf, meaning have gathered, ruach, which can mean spirit or the wind. So who have gathered the wind? be -na. So who have done this? Gather the wind in, there we go, in his fist. Who's done that? Who's gathered the wind in his fist? Me. And then the word for what? Who? Look at this. Zerar Mayim. Now, so now we have a person who gathered the wind in his fist, and here it is who have bound the waters. Bashim la. The root word is simla, which is a garment. So who's done this? Who's who's who have uh who have gathered the um who have gathered the wind in his fist and who's bound the waters in his garment? What he's asking. Who's done that? Who done that? Then we have the next word, me, which is who. 
who is another question. Um, Hakim, which is the word kum, which means to raise or to establish, who have raised or who have um, established, call all, um, at, say, all the ends, arets of the land or the earth. So who have established, so who have established all the ends of the earth? Ma, which is what? Shemo, so what is his name? Uma, and what? Uh, Shame, Beno. And what is his son's name? Ki, if, te die, if you know. So if you know, what is his name and what is his son's name if you know? So the question is, who have, who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if you know? Now, there's a problem. Um, that being said, you can't use Exodus 4 and 22 at all. Why? Because Israel wasn't there for none of this. When it says, who has ascended up to heaven or descended? Israel wasn't there. Israel didn't gather the wind in, in, in the fist of the Lord. Israel wasn't there. They didn't bound the waters in no garment. They didn't do that. They didn't establish all the ends of the earth. So it's asking, what is his name? And what is his son name? If you know. Who was that? Who did that? Who did that? Can you use Exodus 4 and 22? at all so genesis chapter one um genesis one uh going down to uh yeah here we go verse 26 this part right here is what i want to ask about it says elohim adam kid muteno so and god said let us make man in new, which is plural, meaning us a our, our, look at this, image. Look at this. And after our likeness, we see right here. So who is the us right there and the our? That's plural. Huh? Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. This is God saying this. So who's the us and the our? Even Elohim is, this is in the plural form anyway. So who was that? You gotta answer that according to Tanakh. Who was in the beginning? And it said, let us make man in our image. Hmm, chapter three. Um, yeah, look at this. So this is Genesis 3. All right. Um, Genesis 3 and 22. It says, By the Yemer Yehovah, which is behold the hand, behold the nail, God. So, uh, and the Lord God said, Hang, hey, meaning behold, Adam, the man, Haya, uh, Ki Echad. Um, is become as one look at this mimenu of us us let the eye to know told good vera and evil so right there it says behold the man ha adam adam right there the man is become as one of us Hmm. Now remember back in verse 20, it says, Vayikra Adam Shame Ishto Khava Kihu Amakihi Haita Aim Kal Chai. Look at this. And he called um and Adam called uh his wife's name Eve because of four she was the mother of all living. So this is during the time of Adam and Eve right here. 
right here. Adam, Adam. Adam. Right there. But that Genesis 3 and 22, it says, behold, the man, talking about Adam, it says he has become as who? One of us to know good and evil. So that was in the plural form. The man has be has become as one of us. Who is that? Who's that, guys? Hey, that's something that got to be dealt with. Who's the us and who's the our? All right, so let's get another one. Um, I guess we'll go with Micah. Yeah, we'll go with Micah 5 real quick. The book of Micah chapter 5, ladies and gents. Okay, so this is another one that I want to deal with. Um, and I think definitely this is a great time to go ahead and deal with this in the first one. So we have atop, which means now. Uh, then we have the next word, um, uh, tit gold D. So this is uh, gather yourself in troops, bot, uh, daughter, um, your dude, um, daughter of troops, uh, Mizor, the siege, Sham. So it has laid siege, Alenu. Uh, against us so now we see that uh, what's going on here there is uh, a siege that's happening right here all right so Mike is letting us know basically um, that um, that Israel of course obviously gonna be humbled um, and um, yeah they come into attack all right they come into attack so pay very close attention this is very important here all right so here it is. We see that there's a siege that's going on. All right. Then uh, the next word we have here, um, Alenu, which is against us. All right. Um, the next word we have is Ba Shavet uh, with the rod. Yaku, it shall smite. Um, Al of On Chalki, the face, all right, or the cheekbone, if you will. It is a direct object um, that is pointing to something. Then we have the next word. Um, Shafet was the judge of Israel. So now we see this judge here. This is one who is coming to bring, uh, to go about to establish in law, if you will. One is a ruler, if you will. So this is very important. So land siege dealing with a judge that brings us to the next verse all right which is here next verse so hopefully you all are paying attention because this is going to be very very important because this is a question that it seems as if these non-messianics can't never really answer and that's what we're going to go ahead and deal with so we have the atah bayit lachem Ephrata Zair Leot Bealfi Yehuda Mim Ha Li. Then we have uh, Yezait Leot Moshel Be Yisrael. Then we have the word Umusata Me Kedem Mime O Lam. What do we have here? It says, But you, O Bethlehem, or house of bread, Ifrata. Then it says here, um, this is the word for little, Leot. Um, and this is the word from among thousands. So it says, from among you, um, yes, from among you, um, so Ifrata, uh, though you be little among thousands, uh, Yehuda of Judah. Um, then it goes and says, Out of you unto me shall come forth, or which to be what? Ruler in Israel. Ruler in Israel, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is future tense. 
future tense said that, there's, that, that, that the city of Bethlehem, there's somebody that's going to come out of Bethlehem. I want y'all to understand what is being said here. Somebody out of Bethlehem is set to be ruler. Set to be ruler. So, it's letting us know though you be little among thousands. See that? Bethlehem Judah. Be little among thousands. Now understand, David was born in Bethlehem, but he's gone, he's dead now. This was the hometown of David, who was Israel's um, most popular, even greatest king. Hmm. But it said, out of thousands of Israel, yet God chose it as the birthplace of this Messiah to be ruler in Israel. Literally. I want y'all to understand what we looking at here. All right. So it says here, Moshe, ruler in Israel. But look at this. Umo Satai. Who's going forth, meaning his origins. Look at this. Mikadem, meaning what? That comes from old. From old, ancient times, if you will. Mimime, from Olam, everlasting, eternity. That's what this is right here. Everlasting. Strong's H5769. Olam. Olam. Hmm. So here it is. Micah prophesied about this. This glorious promise was fulfilled in Christ in Matthew 2, 5 and 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. This was fulfilled in Christ. And Micah prophesied about that. And we know Yeshua, Jesus was born where? In Bethlehem. But he didn't begin there though. Because his goings forth or his origins is from old and from everlasting those who understand what we call New Testament know this. They know this. Three. That's not it. We're not done. There's more. Pay very close attention to verse three. Lachin yet name. Ad eight to the time. Ooh, we wait till we get to that. Anyway, uh <laughs> yo yo leda. Yelada. Wow. Look at this. We're going to talk about that. The yeter echai. Yeshu vun al bene. So, therefore, he will give them up until the time. Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Until the time. What is this talking about here? So we gotten in verse 2 when it talked about the Lord talked about in Bethlehem, Ephratah. He said that you were smallest among them towns of Judah. But out of you, he was going to bring a ruler for Israel. And talked about whose origins of his family line goes back to ancient times from everlasting, forever. But now we got here, it talked about how the Lord was going to abandon, right? He was going to give them up until a time. But what time though? Yoleda was Travella. This is one who's giving birth. Yoleda. Look at that, have brought forth. So somebody's giving birth to a son. That son is a ruler. 
that son is born in Bethlehem. Who is this? Who is this talking about? So here it is unto this woman who give birth has her son in other words yo we can't act like we don't see that and the remnant is what we have here a hive of his brothers his brothers who the one is to be born it's a male child hmm Wow, his brothers shall return Al, which is unto who? The children. So, the birth of the king in Bethlehem. Who's that talking about? I know you ain't finna say David, who uh, adulterous David. I know you're not finna say that at all. Who's this talking about? David is already gone. His orders didn't go from old and from everlasting, from eternity. So what we got here, we got a people from Jerusalem. You tell them, gather your forces. We're being besieged. They're surrounding us. They're attacking the leader of Israel. They're going to smite them up on the cheek. Look at that. So here it is, but you, Bethlehem, though you be little among thousands of Judah, though you be little among thousands of Judah. Hmm. Look at that. That great influential city. It was truly little among thousands of Israel. Yet God chose the birthplace for the Messiah who is to be ruling in Israel and they shall smite the judge look at that word judge real quick here click on that the judge Shaphat to act as a lawgiver or judge a governor God man look at that mm 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 rule a ruler hmm wait a minute that sounds like Matthew chapter 2 real quick it says now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold there came wise men from the east unto Jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east to come to worship him when Herod the king heard that these things Oh, heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the who? The chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. That's what we just read, for it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou least or little among the princes or the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall a governor or a judge ruler a governor we just read about that word judge that so judge or rule my people Israel look at that right there that was fulfilled in Christ that was literally fulfilled in who we call today Christ in Bethlehem the house of bread Look at that. Ephrata. You know what that means. That was the old name of the place which the Jews um, had love. And that means fruitfulness or abundance. Yeshua was born in the house of fruitfulness, the house of bread. For whence cometh his fruitfulness? Mm, mm, mm who's going forth was from ever, was from old and from everlasting. Everlasting. Yeshua came from Bethlehem. And as I told you earlier, he didn't begin that. His going forth is from 
eternity, the past. Literally. So we got Bethlehem, the house of bread, fruitfulness. That town was one of the smallest ones among Judah. But he said, out of you, he will bring forth a ruler for Israel, etc. Whose origins or going forths have been from old, from everlasting. Who you got that fit that? And this was future tense. Look at this, the Lord will. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth. Look at this, that's a woman that have birth to a child, have brought forth. I mean, when the child is born. And how do we know it's a male child? Because it then the remnant of who? His brethren shall return to the children of Israel. So who is this? And he shall stand and feed, I mean, act as a shepherd and feed the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God, and they shall abide. For now he shall be, what? He shall be great unto the ends of the earth. Now, wait a minute. John chapter 20. Is it John 20 and 17? No. Uh, yeah, here we go. She said to her, touch me not. I'm not yet descending to my father, but go to my brother and say unto them, I send to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. So who is this? Who is this fit? Who is this fit? Got some explaining to do. Let's grab another one. Um, Exodus chapter 20. No, Exodus uh, 23. Exodus 23. Now, so what we gather, y'all, whoever this person is, they have to be born in Bethlehem. And their origins go from old and from everlasting. From old and from everlasting. That's eternity. That's his origins. That's literally his origins. Who is that? Who's that talking about? That being said, let's go down here. So we have um, Exodus 23 and 20. It says, Hine Anoki Shaleach Melach Lefanecha Lish Marcha Baderech Velacha Velacha Viacha El Ha Mechom Asher Ha Kinoti. So Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you or to guard you in the way. And then it says, and to bring you to the place which I have prepared. So here it is. We have this um, angel. All right. Here we have an angel. All right. And this angel or this messenger is guiding and keeping the children of Israel in the way. Showing them the path, the road, if you will. So who is this angel? Because when you ask them in Genesis 1, 26, when it said, uh, God said, let us make men our image, they'll be like, it was the angel. Well, what scripture is that? Show me in the Torah and the Tanakh. What, what we call today the Old Testament, for those who are probably new to all of this. Show me that. And if you feel that way, well, then who's this angel then? Because the next verse, look at what it says here. Um, he should mirror, beware of him. I mean, beware, me, Panai, beware of him. It's what he's telling us. Beware of him and do what? Ushma and obey, be kolo, his voice. Al tamir bo. So it's telling us, of course, to beware of him and obey his voice. And then it say, don't provoke him. Why is that? Why did he say not to 
provoke him, ladies and gentlemen. Don't provoke him. It says key for low in the negative. Uh, you saw he would not pardon. Look at this word right here. Lefish achem. He would not pardon your sins, your transgressions. Here's the root word right here. Your transgressions. Strong's H, 6588. Pesha. 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 He would not pardon your transgressions. Then it says, key for my name. Look at this. Bikorbo is in him. That name means authority, character, fame, reputation. Let's click on that real quick. Shame. Rather, idea, composition, proposition, application, a mark, individual, by honor. Look at this. Authority. This angel was given the authority of God. It says, my name is in him. My authority is in him. So here it is, the angel, we was told to beware of him and obey him and listen to his voice and don't provoke him. In other words, don't provoke him to anger. Why? Because he ain't going to pardon your transgressions if you do this. So who was this angel that had the authority to pardon transgressions? Who had that type of authority? Make it make sense. Who had this type of authority? Who do you got? Show us. Who was this angel that was with the children of Israel? And here it is. He had the authority said for my name is in him. My name is in him. Wow. Here we go. Verse 23. All right. Um, no, verse 22. I'm like, wait a minute. That one was right. So we have Ke'im, but if Shema, indeed, uh, Tishma. So here it is. Um, uh, Ke'im Tishma, but if indeed. Bechal, um, yeah, but if indeed, I'm, I'm sorry, but in Shema, so, but if indeed obey his voice, the Asita, the Asita, and do call all, I share that, I debir, all that I what? Speak, speak, say. Mm. So, Adabir. So, if you do all that I speak, Adabir. Um. Um. The I. I'm sorry. The I. Yavti. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Adabir ve Yavti et oy vecha. So, if you do all that I shall speak, he then you know. Yo. Let me tell y'all something real quick. Ain't no getting around this. I'm gonna finish this verse off. Vizarti et Zoreka. So he's letting us know that if you indeed shall obey his voice and do all that he speaks, or that he's gonna say, he says he's gonna be an enemy to your enemies or your hostiles and an opposer to your opposer, your, uh, an adversary to your adversaries. It's basically what he's saying that he, um, ultimately it's going to be so here for if you indeed all right so if you indeed here right here guys you obey his voice and do all that he shall speak all right if you do that all right he's saying that he's going to be an enemy to your enemies and an opposer to your opposer or adversary to your adversary it's what he's saying he's going to do but remember back in verse here, when he talked about this angel, when it says, uh, beware of him um, and obey his voice right here, all right? And do not provoke him for he will not pardon your transgressions, your sins, for my name is in him. Look, 
when it looks at this word here, your transgressions, this word here, that's the word for sins. Right there. The pay, shin, iron. Let's look at that again. Strong's H, 6588. Peshe. Peshe. Now, I want to read, I want to hear that one more time. Listen. Strong's H, 6588. Peshe. Peshe. Now, why am I going with this? You may ask. We see this word here for sin, right? Iniquity, sin. That being said, let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, all right? And if I just go here, it's not, um, Shia who? And we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to go to chapter 53. All right. And we're going to look at verse five. So we have, is Isaiah 53 and five. I'll give you about five seconds to get there. All right. Hopefully you're there. All right. So, um, yeah. So. Isaiah 53 and 5, it says, But who and he, Mecholal, was wounded, Mish, look at this, Sha'enu, he was wounded for our transgressions. That's the same root word right there. Right there. That's the word, that's the same word for transgressions, which I'm going to show you in a second. So, it says, And he was wounded for our transgressions. They were striking him, beating him. Sounds like what Micah said. Then it says, Menduka, all right, and he was bruised, me, I, yeah, um, me, I know tenu, and he was wounded for our what? Transgressions. So he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for, I'm sorry, bruised for our iniquities. Bruised for our iniquities. Who is this talking about? Huh? And he was born in for who? Our transgressions. It's the same root word. Pisa. Pisa. Look, matter of fact, let me show you that real quick. And he was born in for our transgressions. Pisa. That's the same word. Strong's H, 6588. Pesha. Pesha. Mm. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the same word we just saw about the angel when it said, don't provoke him for you not pardon your transgressions, meaning your sins. Right here in Isaiah 53 and 5, it's saying the same thing. And he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. You get people that are say, oh, this was talking about Israel. It says he he was wounded for our transgression. He, who's the he? That was Israel. It said he was wounded for our transgression. Who's the our? Israel. Wait, he is singular, our is plural. He, which is a man, was, was uh, wounded for our transgression. Wouldn't the our be Israel? Well, yeah, okay, well then who's the he then? He was wounded for our transgressions. He, singular, our, plural. How's that both talking about Israel? Oh, uh, this was talking about, I've heard Jeremiah, Hezekiah. So Hezekiah or Jeremiah was wounded for our sins, is what you're saying. That absolutely makes no sense. That makes no sense. They don't fit this. They, they weren't born in Bethlehem. That don't fit them at all. What are you talking about? The who and he, Mechulau, was wounded. Mech for our transgressions. Meduka, 
which is the word for bruise in the masculine, and he uh, was bruised. Me, I, no tano. Look at that. Me, I, no tano. This man was bruised. I mean, he got beat down for our iniquities. Musara, which is what? The chastisement, the punishment, them beatings. Huh? Follow me now. Follow me now. So, again, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity, a chastisement. Um, Shalomeno of our peace alive was on him. Uvacha Burato. And with his stripes, Nirpa, the root word Rafa, which means heal, like Raphael. Look at this. Are we healed? So with his stripes, we're healed. That's new. That's plural. Our. Rafa. With his stripes, we're healed. That man right there. Whoever this is talking about. With his stripes, we are healed. Come on, y'all. You not messianics. Y'all know y'all see this. Y'all know y'all see this. Who was the person that this is talking about? Oh, they love the twist. I might do that in, in another series too. Uh, Psalms 49 about the ransom scripture. Um, uh, Deuteronomy 24, 16, uh, and Ezekiel 18. I may do that one in the next series. You know, it's just like, yo, did you even read the chapter? You just read that verse? Oh, no. So, yo, oh, human sacrifice? Yeah, what about Judges 11? That, that was a sacrifice. We, but look, we, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Everything they think they got, they don't got. At all. I want y'all to really understand that this is talking about a man that was going to be wounded and beat down for the sins and the transgressions and the iniquities of the Israelites, the children of Israel. And if this ain't Yeshua, then who is it then? Who fits these prophecies then? Don't give us a I don't know. Please don't give us that. Who else fits this? If it's not talking about Christ. That's what we want to know. If this not talking about Christ, who is this talking about then? Who is this talking about? Huh? So, let's go down to verse 10. So remember, look, y'all, we still in Isaiah 53. And now we're about to look at verse 10. Huh? So, it says, Behova or and Yehoah, Chafetz. Look at that. Chafetz. So, and it pleased the Lord, Dahu, Dahu, to bruise him. That gave the Lord pleasure to do that, is what he's saying there. You follow me? He, Heli. He have put him to grief. I mean, he went through it. Sorrow. Man, aim when Tashim thou shalt make. Uh-oh. In a minute, we getting closer. A sham. An offering. This is a sin offering. Nafshol, meaning his soul. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. His soul, meaning his self. That means this ain't talking about no Israel. 
in the singular part. It pleased the Lord to bruise him and he went through it. And here it is, his soul is a sin offering. Wait a minute, a sin offering, guilt offering. Who is this? Who is this sin offering that he's talking about? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And it pleased the most how to do this. Please him to do this. And he is an offering. Look at this. Enough show. Enough show. Ladies and gentlemen, my Hebrew readers, what's that? Enough show. Yere. He shall see. Zerah, his offspring, descendants. Huh? He shall see his offspring or descendants. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Ye'arik. Ye'arik. He shall prolong. I mean his days. All right? It's going to prolong his days. The chafetz sounds the same word right here for pleasure. See that? And the pleasure, Yehovah of the Lord, by Yado, in his hand, has the word Yad, which is a hand. All right? In his hand. Yislach shall prosper. Advance, if you will. It's going to be successful in this. Are you hearing me? Going to be successful in this. Now you get people, oh, what do you mean when you shall see a seed you prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand? Well, understand something. The death and the burial, the offering of the Messiah, that don't end the story of him. He still lives on. He lives to see his seed. His spiritual descendants or he shall prolong his days. He ain't under the curse of death. Our Messiah still lives. He still lives. He died. He rose. His life shall be lived prospering in the, pre in the uh, pleasure of the Lord. He still lives. That's the long story short. Let's pull it up in English. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our, our, he, Christ, our, Israel. The chastisement of our peace was upon who? Him. And with his stripes, we, Israel are healed. We're healed. Isaiah 53 is talking about him. It's talking about Christ. Look at this. Acts 8. So right here, it says, it's, I'm going to start here. It says, And when he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who at the charge of all her treasure had come to Jerusalem to worship. Right? Then it says, Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, which is the Greek word to say Isaiah, the prophet. So he's reading Isaiah. It says, Then the spirit of um, said unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? Understand what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man shall guide me? And, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him, meaning in the chariot. The place of the scripture he read was, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, 
and like the lamb dumb before the shearer, so he opened out his mouth. That's John chapter 19. John 18, John 19. He didn't say a word. All right? Now, one might be like, what do you mean? Where's that at? Let me show you real quick. Verse 7. Uh, 6. It says, and, he, uh, and all we are like sheep going astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He carried our sins. This man did. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. That's what he's talking about right here. It says the place of the scripture he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter or the lamb. And like a lamb dumb before a shearer, so he opened not his mouth. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Because remember, nobody knew and understood the exact time when Christ was born. I may talk about that in the next series. But it says, for, uh, for his life was taken from the earth. Then it says, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this prophet this? Or who is he talking about? Of himself? or some other man. And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, Yeshua, Jesus. So he knew and understood that that was Jesus. First Peter 2. Real quick. All right. So it says, First Peter 2 and 21, it says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving as an example to you that you shall follow in his steps, who did no sin and was uh was um neither was that guile found in his mouth. Now wait a minute. Isaiah 53. Here. Um where I want to go here. It says, um, yeah, I may talk about this uh, in the next verse. It said he was taken for prisoner from judgment, which is John 18, John 19, who shall declare his generation from he was cut off out of the land of the living, meaning he died for the transgressions or the sins of my people. Was he stricken or beaten? Yet he made the grave with the wicked. We're going to talk about that maybe next series. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any guile or deceit in his mouth. That's what he's talking about right there. So right here, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed to himself him that judges righteously. Dealing with John 19. Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree. Yet I mean, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Look at that. Acts 5. <laughs> Verse 30, where it talked about Christ. It says, the God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on the tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior to be give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Matthew chapter one, verse 21. What did it say right here? It says, and he shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We also read this here, uh, Matthew 1, 21. It says, for who, uh, and uh, that he, and he, your led, Ben, he shall give birth to a son. All right. So, uh, once again, and he shall give birth to a son, um, the Karata. Uh, you shall call Ed Shemo his name, Yeshua, I mean, um, Yeshua, which is Jesus, or Yeshua, Kihu, for he, Yoshia, he shall save, which looks just like Yeshua right there, has the same root word, he shall save, Ed, direct object, Amo, his people, Mecha, Tote him, for their transgressions, I mean, for their sins, if you will, because you have the word, Chetet, sin. All right. So that being said, we see the same exact thing. Who's this talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Who's this talking about? That is literally prophecy. It's so much I want to talk about, but these are just a few things. Matter of fact, let me get one more really quick. One more. Um, let me just 
down here. All righty. So we're going to go to uh, in the Tanakh. To Helene. So we're going to go to Psalms. All right. And which one do I want to grab? Um, hmm. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 110. Yeah. So it says, Le David mis mor naum. So a Psalm of David, and this is the word for say, Yehovah. So thus saith the Lord. Look at this. La, um, la, um, uh, tongue twist. La donai. So that says to my Lord, Master. Look at that. So the Lord said to my Lord, shave. All right, which means to do, uh, to uh, sit. Look at this. Let me me. So, you know how like you got Benjamin, Benjamin, son at my right hand. Same word right there. So sit at my right hand. I'll until a sheet until I put or make or set um oveja your hostels. And this is the word for footstool here. Uh, Hadom le rag lecha. So this word here, or uh, regal, ragel, that's the word for foot. All right, and this is the word for stool, if you will. All right. So here it is. We have one Lord, the Most High, right there, and then we have another one, Adon. It's another Lord. Look at this. Psalms chapter one hundred and ten. All right, Psalm of David. So we have one Lord right here. That's the Most High, the Lord. Said unto my Lord, Adon. Strong's H113. Adon. Adon. Let's click on that. Let's see what it is. Master. Lord. Look at that. So here it is. Controller. Lord, master, owner. So this yod here is possession. That means my. So why would David, who was king, refer to another man as his master? Because it said the Lord said to my master. Those are two different lords right there. So he told this master to sit at his right hand. So there's a master who is David's master that sits at the right hand of the Lord until he comes back to make his enemies his footstool. Think about what I'm saying here. There's a master, a Lord, that sits at the right hand of the Lord, the Most High. And he's going to sit there until this Lord make him to make his enemies his footstool, to use him to make his enemies his footstool. So that being said, it's like, well, wait a minute. Who is this Lord then? Because that's two different Lords. Check this out. Look at what it says about this same Lord right here. In verse 5, it says, Adoni, all right, the Lord, Al, at Yamincha, in your right hand, Machat, shall strike Bayom in the day, Afo, his wrath, Melachim, kings. He's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. So this Lord, who's at the right hand of, uh, what we at? The Lord. He's going to strike through kings. And for you English only, that's the separation from this Lord to that Lord. In English and Hebrew, there's a capital one for you English readers. And there's a, a capital L, two different Lords. David, here it is. He's going to, he said that this king, whoever he is, right? It said the Lord of Swarna would not go back. He ain't going to change his mind. He's a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's Hebrews 6 and 20. Hebrews 7, um, Hebrews 7 as well. Whoever this person is, 
Then what he's going to do, he's going to judge them on the nations. He's going to fill the places with what? With the dead bodies. Who's that? This is future. Who's this? Who's this king that's going to do to sit at the right hand of the Lord? David is king, the most powerful man in the earth, in Israel. And he's saying, the Lord, the most high, said to my Lord, my master. So the, whoever he's talking about, whoever his master is, he's going to be a priest under the order of Melchizedek, and he's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He's going to fill the place with dead bodies. Who's that talking about? Sounds a lot like what we read in them prophecies in the New Testament. What we call today the New Testament. Who is that? Hebrews 6, verse 20. Whether the forerunner is for us enter, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order or under the order of Melchizedek. That's Christ. That's who that's talking about. And if it ain't him, then who is it? Who is it? I know you're finna say the Melchizedek back in uh, Genesis 14. <laughs> when met Abraham returning from the slaughter, who's that? Who's this person as a priest under the order of Melchizedek that's gonna strike through kings in the day of his wrath? Who they talking about? Hmm? You will say. So, um, what a start. Um, I guess when it talks about him, it says, for this evidence that our Lord sprang out of a descendant from Judah, which tried Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Why? Because Levites were the priests. And yet it's far more evident a known fact. For after the similar tool means the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Who's the other priest? Christ, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. That's a whole nother topic. But how was he made? After the power of a what? Endless life. Why? Because his origins go from old from everlasting. Endless life never dies. Living forever. God. It says, for he testified, though a priest forever after or under the order of Melchizedek. Right there. Right there. That's talking about Christ. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, Matthew chapter 22. Let's go down to uh, 36. Yeah, here we go. Verse 41. It says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yeshua, Jesus asked them, saying, what think you of Christ? Like, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? That's what they're asking. Whose son is the Messiah? They said unto him that the Messiah is who? The son of David. But look at what he asked them. Jesus, are you sure? Or he said unto them, how is, how did David in, in what? In spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. If David then called him, talking about the Messiah, Lord, and how was he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst and neither dare any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. So remember he asked them, what do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They said, he's the son of David. And he asked them, well, if David called his son Lord, then how is he his son? You're not going to call your son who you gave birth to Lord at all. You're not going to do that at all. So who is that talking about? Who is he? I know you ain't going to use Exodus 4 and 22. Can't use that. Because Israel don't sit at the right hand of the Lord that's going to come back and make his enemies his footstool. So, that's two different lords. Uh, I guess I'll end with this. Let me switch this to English real quick. guess I'll end with this. In the Apocrypha, two things I want to bring out. In the Apocrypha, chapter 51. All right, chapter 51, and I'm going to start in nine. I'm going to start in eight. So it says, then thought I upon your mercy. And this is what you call the Old Testament. This is in the Septuagint. In the Greek Septuagint, this is in there. So it says, then thought I upon your mercy, O Lord, 
upon the acts of old and how thou deliverest such as wait for thee and savest them out of the hand of, of the enemies. Then lifted up my supplications. So he about to pray from the earth and pray for deliverance from death. I called upon the Lord. Who's that? But look at this, the father of my Lord. Those are two different Lord. He said, I called upon the Lord, the father of who? My Lord, that he would not leave me in the days of my trouble and in the time of the proud when there was no help. It says he called upon the Lord Christ, the father of his Lord, God. Look at that. Hmm. Isn't that something? So, um, yeah, right there. He called upon the Lord, the Father of His Lord. Now, yo, now that's something. All right. So, last one. It says, I'm gonna start. And this is what you call the Old Testament. All righty. I'm going to start in 33. On down. So it says, right here it says, I, Ezra, received the charge of the Lord upon Mount Horeb, or Horeb, that I should go unto Israel. But when I came to them, that they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the Lord. Verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O you heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. This is what we call Old Testament. <clears throat> Hold up. And take a sip of water. Look for your shepherd, that he shall give you whatever lasting rest. For he is near at hand. Now he's near, y'all. That shall come in the end of the world. This is what we call today, what you call it the Old Testament. It says, be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Everlasting. Leave the shadow of the darkness of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. Whoever this shepherd is is going to give you everlasting rest. He's going to come in the end of the world. And he's going to be ready to bring the reward for the king that you're going to get. He's going to be the everlasting light that's going to shine up on you. And he said, I testify his savior openly. Let's see who this is. It says, oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. Give thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Sounds like revelation. It says, which are departed from the shadow of the darkness of the world and have uh, received glorious garments of the Lord. That's talking, that reminds me of the Apostle Paul. Uh, what he talked about, it says, take that number, Oziah, and shut up those that, um, that are clothed in white. That's Revelation, right? Revelation 19. It says, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Take, I mean, it said the number of, your children whom you longest for is fulfilled. Sound like revelation. Beseek the power of the Lord that your people which have been called from the beginning may be hollowed, sanctified, set apart, cleansed. Then he says, I as you saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I cannot number. That's Revelation 7 and 9. And they praise the Lord with songs. Revelation 14 and 1. It says, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns, the crown of life. James chapter one, verse 12 to 14. It says, was more exalted a praise, which I, <gasps> I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel, said, sir, a Lord, what are these? Like, who are these? Like, what's going on? He answered, said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and have put on immortal. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 39 through 50, uh, 57. It says, and I confess the name of God, and now are they crowned and receive palms. Again, Revelation 7 and 9, uh, verse 46. Then I said to the angel, what young person is this that, uh, that crowned them and giveth them palm in their hands? Verse 47. So he answered and said unto me, 
It is the son of God. It is the son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Look at that. Then begin I greatly to commend them that have stood so stiffly for the authority of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, go your way and tell my people what manner of things are how great warnings of the Lord your God, which you have seen. The son of God, that's that great shepherd that he was talking about. That was going to bring you everlasting rest. That was him right there. That was going to bring you everlasting rest. He is that everlasting light that's going to shine up on you forevermore. James, I mean, uh, uh, John chapter nine, verse 12. I'm a Jane, I'm sorry, uh, no, no, that's uh, John chapter 8, verse 12, and John chapter 9, verse 6, Revelation chapter 21, verse 23 and 24. He's the everlasting light. That's him. He's the shepherd. Mm. Look at that. Look for your shepherd. That's him, the son of God. The son of God. And I'll do plenty more series, but hopefully this would answer lots of questions of why we are Meshachim, Messianics, Christians, not to be confused with the religion. So if I'm wrong, answer everything I did according to Torah and Tanakh only. Go into the Hebrew text, pull it up. Let's talk about it. But I got lots more questions. This is just part one. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Oh yeah, can't get around that.